So this set of lectures is going to talk about elbow dislocations and elbow instability. Uh, it's broken up into three parts. Uh, there's going to be first elbow dislocations and instability, and then olecranon fractures and also uh, radial head fractures. So first we'll talk about elbow uh, dislocations and uh, instability. So um, it is fairly common joint dislocation almost always occurs posteriorly and there's a couple of terms you should be aware of right so there's simple dislocations right and then there's complex dislocations okay so simple dislocations are pure ligamentous injuries right those without fracture and complex dislocations is when you dislocate and have a fracture okay so those are the two terms you should you should keep in mind Usually it happens from a fall onto the extended elbow. Sometimes can be uh, more of a high energy injury, uh, maybe a transolecranon fracture dislocation. Uh, you, like with anything else, careful neurologic and vascular exam is, uh, is helpful. Uh, brachial artery injuries don't happen that often with uh, elbow dislocation. Uh, nerve injuries are uncommon, but they can happen. So you should be aware of them, especially uh, uh, if the patient's uh, not going to be fully awake or if they're a trauma patient and they're going to get intubated or something like that. And don't forget to examine the wrist for distal radial ulnar joint injuries. Okay, because if a distal radial ulnar joint injury is present, you could possibly also have a, a longitudinal forearm injury, like an interosseous membrane injury, so-called esophagoplasty injury. Okay? So there's some soft tissue restraints around the elbow, the medial ligaments, the lateral ligaments, and then the dynamic stabilizers, right? The medial flexor pronator mass, the lateral extensor mass. So the MCL is the primary stabilizer of the elbow, okay? Along with some of the body restraints resists valgus forces, okay? And the main band is the anterior o oblique band, okay? And then there's these other bands as well. Its function is again a medial stabilizer, especially that anterior band. Uh, in full extension, it provides 30% uh, of your valgus stability. Uh, in 90 degree uh, flexion, it provides over 50% of valgus stability. Uh, and uh, resection of that band uh, can um, cause instability. So the lateral ligaments prevent posterior subluxation and rotation of the ulna. So so-called posterior, posterior rotatory instability as is shown here. Here you can see, if you look very carefully, um, the uh, radial head is not perfectly congruent with what seems to be the capitellum over here. Okay, and there can be rotation uh, and posterior subluxation. So posterior lateral rotatory instability. So um, sometimes if a patient has that, they need a repair of that lateral ligaments. So um, when you get a dislocation, there's a rupture of the capsule, there's a tear of the MCL, um, you have a uh, uh, tear of the lateral ligaments and some degree of uh, dynamic stabilizing uh, disruption as well, and some osteochondral injuries. So occasionally you can get fractures as well, right, and I mentioned this before. Simple dislocation is without um, bony injury and then the complex dislocation is when you have a fracture. So fracture plus uh, dislocation is a complex dislocation. Um, and these often can occur with the radial head and coronoid. And what happens when you get three of those, right? So uh, radial head, coronoid, and um, an elbow dislocation is a so-called terrible triad. Okay, and we'll come back to this, but uh, keep this in mind. Terrible triad, right? So radial head, coronoid, and a dislocation, terrible triad injury, bad injury to get. So most people classify these based on the direction of dislocation, and, and as I said, by far, posterior is the one you need to know. Okay, that's where it almost always occurs. Uh, simple versus complex. Kind of mentioned that now a few times. Usually, reduction is uh, correction of the medial lateral displacement and longitudinal traction. Uh, you rarely have to put patients to sleep uh, with general anesthesia for this. Um, and um, you definitely want to get post-reduction x-rays to make sure you're in. Um, and you do want to know if they're stable, right? So if they dislocate and you don't even know if 
you know, they were stable or unstable, that's a potential problem. You may not be, you know, you may get surprised then when they show up in the office and they're out again. Um, so get some sense of what seems, you don't want, you know, you don't want to tr try to make them dislocate uh, and, but you want to gently take them through a range of motion to get some sense when they are starting to potentially slip out while they're still, uh, um, you know, sedated or uh, undergoing the procedure. So um, most elbows are going to be a little bit unstable to valgus stress after dislocation. Um, but uh, you want to get some sense how, how, like how many degrees, this is something I'll ask often, at how many degrees of flexion um, uh, did you have before it seemed to want, want to pop out again? Okay, did you have to keep it flexed at 90 degrees and anything less than that it uh, popped out or were you able to extend it to about 120? Just an example. Uh, you definitely want to look very carefully at the post-reduction exercise, not only for concentric reduction, but um, you know, to also make sure that uh, if it's not concentrically reduced, are there bony fragments in there? Sometimes you may not see them on x-ray very easily. And is there subluxation to indicate some residual posterolateral rotatory instability? Now, with a simple dislocation, you should almost always treat it non-operatively if they're stable. Uh, so if it's a stable reduction, you splint them uh, for a short period of time. Uh, you get new x-rays, and you start range of motion. Okay. Uh, role of surgery is really minimal for a stable, simple dislocation. Okay, so it's tre treated non-operatively. But if it's unstable, okay, if it's unstable, then you may have to uh, consider doing some type of surgical repair or surgical stabilization. And of course, if you have a complex dislocation, that's another story. Um, so if you have an unstable reduction, you got to figure out what's going on, and then either um, if it's if it's complex, repair the bony processes and or and or replace uh, deal you know reattach your lateral lateral ligament maybe the medial side as well uh, and then decide do you need uh, splint or do you need external fixation uh, now if you have no bony injury at all well then you would do a soft tissue repair and those are the ones that are potentially harder uh, to keep stable and uh, you may need to protect those with some type of um, maybe X-fix or splint. In a lot of it depends on how compliant the patient is, how big the patient is. The patient's a big, heavy patient. Um, uh, that's going to be difficult to, to stabilize in a splint. A uh, patient is a relatively thin body habitus, compliant patient, uh, not going to be intubated in the ICU. That patient probably will be fine in a splint. Okay. Same thing like with knee dislocations. Um, if you have valgus instability, uh, you can reconstruct the MCL. Not the most satisfying procedure, but it can be done. Dealing with the radial head certainly uh, helps as well. Uh, and when you have elbow instability, okay, when you have elbow instability, you do not resect the radial head. Okay. Now, sometimes radial head resections can work fine for isolated radial head fractures that are comminuted, but not when there's elbow instability, and absolutely not if there's any sign of press the injury. So the posterolateral rotatory instability is um, a phenomenon where uh, you have the lateral collateral ligaments out and when the patient does certain things, for instance, if they sort of lift themselves up out of a chair using their hands, they may notice some pain, possible subluxation. There's also an, a physical exam maneuver uh, for this that you can do to look for a posterolateral pivot shift. Uh, and these are treated with reconstructing, uh, reconstructing the lateral collateral ligaments. So with more complex elbow dislocations, when you have um, radial uh, head fractures, uh, these got to be fixed. They got to be fixed, and if they can't be fixed, you got to put a metal radial head in there. Okay. In addition to ligament repair. Uh, typically, this is done with a lateral incision. Now, you may do a posterior midline incision and then make a flap laterally if you like, uh, but the interval is going to be laterally uh, through either a Kaplan or a Coker or um, one of the you know, few types of uh, lateral approaches. The, you know, the more posterior you are, it's a little harder to get to the radial head. The more anterior you go, like it with it. Uh, EDC splitting approach, you're more in line with the radial head, but the more anterior you go, the more likely you are to uh, injure a posterior interosseous nerve. 
Um, when you plate these, uh, if it's a radial neck, you want to make sure that it does not impinge upon the distal radio, or the proximal radial ulnar joint. Okay. Coronoid processes have to be addressed as well uh, when you have uh, elbow instability. If it involves a, a big fragment, 50% or more, they got to be definitely fixed. Um, uh, you can fix these with lag screws. Sometimes if they're smaller fragments, you can grab the capsule, pull it down. Uh, so for instance, if there's a small fracture uh, up here, uh, you can make uh, drill holes down here, take a suture, tie it through the capsule, pull that down, and then tie this up in a knot over here. That's one way to deal with s smaller um, coronoid fractures. Here's a case example. Proximal ulna fracture, okay, it's not. It's really not an olecranon fracture. It's a, it doesn't involve the olecranon process. The fracture is all the way down here. Proximal ulna fracture, displaced coronoid process, okay. Um, there's a fragment right there. Um, and then you have a dislocated uh, fractured radial head. So if you look at this x-ray up here, I'm sorry, not the greatest films, but the, the radius seems to end here, and then there's there's something out there, okay? There's a coronoid, there's a radial head on that picture, and this is treated with um, fixation of the ulna, fixation of the coronoid, radial head uh, repair, and uh, what, you know, what I didn't show is that a complex injury like this we're now seeing more often that uh, if a, a neck uh, head fracture of the radial head probably is better treated with radial head replacement, um, but certainly um, this is an option as well, though we've kind of moved a little bit away of treating the complex radial fractures with elbow instability uh, with uh, osteosynthesis only. So radial head replacements have gotten more common for those. All right, so we'll stop here, and then we'll uh, pick up in the next set of slides with the um, olecranon fractures. Thanks.